Hi, I'm Alex Bontras and welcome to this special report on Honor Flight Kern County in Washington, D.C. Join us as we travel along with 29 World War II, Korean and Vietnam War veterans. First up, we visit our nation's capital where the veterans were greeted by House Majority Leader and Congressman Kevin McCarthy. But before visiting the memorials, it was a huge welcome through Phoenix and Washington, D.C. airports as the veterans made their way to our nation's capital. You know, we, we're given really a lot of attention and a lot of respect wherever we go. People clap and say, tell my father thank you for his service. And uh, it's very heartwarming and makes me feel um, uh, very good. 29 veterans are on this trip, including World War II, Korean and Vietnam veterans. If you look all the way down there, you'll see the doors of the Senate. Right down there, you'll see the doors to the House. If you ever watch a former president uh, passes away, their body lies in state right there. To be able to take our veterans from Kern County and show them the capital, the monuments to so much of what they defended, um, it really, to me, always gives me goosebumps. The idea to say thank you from a very grateful nation and uh, just honor them for what they've been able to do throughout their lifetime. Liz Milan Wilder is on this trip as a guardian with her father, a 98-year-old World War II veteran who served with the 7th Infantry in the Pacific. Just even the ride over here with the police escort and the sirens and, I mean, just, it's amazing. It, I would, like, encourage any vet to come on this trip. It, you'll never see anything like this. I would love to have my grandchildren here to see this. This is one in a lifetime. It's great, great. First time I've been here, I'm looking at architecture that is just 100% pure history. After touring the Capitol, the veterans now head to World War II Memorial, a memorial honoring the millions of veterans who served and sacrificed so much, of course, including the ones on this trip. Unfortunately, many veterans die before they can make the trip. We honor these veterans and their families with a special program and ceremony at the memorials referred to as Flag of Our Heroes. It is our desire to show the respect so richly deserved to the deceased World War II, Korean, and Vietnam War veterans who never had the opportunity to visit their memorials and to the families of those veterans. It's heartfelt um, just to be able to honor my uncle in this fashion. Kevin Davey wanted to honor his uncle, Nicholas Luciano, with the special ceremony at the World War II Memorial. Luciano served in World War II and fought in the Battle of Iwo Jima. My, uh, my brothers and I all chose to serve uh, in, the, in the armed forces, both the Air Force, Marine Corps, and the Army. Um, we spent a great deal of time with him when we were younger, and uh, I think that he left an impression upon us. Now we head to Arlington National Cemetery where the veterans will view a changing of the guard and four of our Kern County veterans will be able to lay a wreath at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. To think that we were chosen out of all the people that was there to represent the, in my case, the guys from Vietnam 
and uh, it, I wish everybody could go through that. Last up, the veterans will head to the Korean, Vietnam and Lincoln memorials. I talked to a Vietnam War hero who says being here and seeing the memorial in person finally gives them the recognition they deserve. At that time, in 64, when I discharged, the war wasn't that popular. And so the only orders that we had when we left the ship was go immediately to the bus depot take off your uniform because somebody's going to either beat you up or, or you know or, or hurt you now it means that we we really that what we did meant something because when we got home we, it didn't mean anything to us because we just hid from vietnam to the korean war david newman played a critical role in the war repairing military planes during the korean war especially the propellers type airplanes which they radio controlled up in the air and then shot them out of the air with missiles. This was at Almogordo Air Force Base. They don't see themselves as the heroes that they are. They see themselves as just some guys who are, did their job. And it's so much more than that. It's so much more than that. This was just a chance meeting. We're here to see the Constitution of the United States, and they are as well, um, which is the founding principles of um, why we're able to serve and to help our nation uh, continue as the strong nation that it is. They've been through so much that, you know, it's always, you know, just go out and meet one and just thank them for, for what they've done to make this country what it is today. Our next stop during day three of our trip with Honor Flight Kern County here in Washington, D.C. takes us here to the National Archives Museum where over two centuries of letters, memos, and drawings, maps are kept. During our trip here to the National Archives, World War II veterans had the opportunity to hold in their hands a copy of the Instrument of Surrender by the Japanese during World War II. These, these are the Japanese surrender papers from World War II. It's been emotional for me, just seeing him, so excited about everything. He wanted to call everybody yesterday and tell them about the flag he received, and he was just so excited. We are now here at the Smithsonian Museum, where the veterans are able to walk through exhibits like this one, The Price of Freedom. It's an exhibit showing just how brave and selfless these men and women were for our country. You think of the age that he was at that time, and you think back, you know, could I have done something like that? We were lucky. We had four boys in the service of my family, and we all came back. They did a lot for our country, and that's why we're here today. Thank you so much for joining us on this special report on Honor Flight Kern County here in Washington, D.C. We hope you were inspired by some of the stories of these brave veterans who fought so hard for our country's freedom. In Washington, D.C., Alex Batres, 23ABC.